This is the perfect time to get apples. I'm not sure which apples to get yet for this recipe, but I'll look around and pick something out. I'm gonna get this snap dragon apple. This is very sweet, a little bit tart flavor with vanilla melon and spiced undertones. That sounds like that would be pretty good for an apple juice. And then I think I'm gonna get a Fuji apple, Gala's, Cortland, and then some golden delicious apples. I'm hoping this will be enough. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Make It Make, where I always try to encourage you, if you can't get it to make, then make it make. So the time has finally arrived where I can actually show you this system. Um, it's a Slavic system. I bought this system a couple of months ago and I just was really taking my time to learn it before I brought it to you. Hopefully I do it correctly. Um, I do have a friend who um, has lived in Ukraine a good part of her life. That's, you know, what they did there and what her family did. And uh, we worked together in trying to, for me to try to learn as much as I can through FaceTime. <laughs> Um, so I hope I do it correctly. I think I've got it. Um, so yeah, but let me introduce you to this system. First of all, they go off the metric system, you know, um, leaders. Um, and here are, here's one of the jars. This is three, a three liter jar. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. This is the lid that came with it. This is not like a preserving lid. This is just like if you take off the canning lid, then you would put this on top, kind of like what we have with other systems. And I'm going to take it off. And then this is the top. There are no threads on this at all. And these lids, I've been saving these for you because they are absolutely stunning. These are the lids and they come in many different colors. I'll make sure that you get a close up on how beautiful they are. Okay. And then you sit the lid on top. It's very different from the American system. As you can see, this is kind of <laughs> what we're dealing with here. It's not like I'm gonna put a ring on top and secure it tightly. That's not what we do with this system. We use a crimper and this will crimp down the sides of it and I will show you how to do that to make a seal. Kind of like if you're opening up, <clears throat> pardon me, um, a uh, old coca-cola bottle or a beer bottle it's crimped around the edges and that's how it's done now here is the other jar this is beautiful and i will make sure that you know where to buy these um i'm i don't know of other places you could buy it i'm just gonna um <clears throat> pardon me put down <clears throat> excuse me the website that I got it it was on Etsy and they were very wonderful to work with um, I will tell you this though it is coming um, straight from another country so um, I paid more for the shipping than I did for the product which is just typical with international shipping so if you're willing to do that you can have a set like this and again I'll make sure that that link is in the bottom again taking off the lid and i love how this one glass is has a tint of green in it makes it very beautiful and um, i don't know i mean this system is gorgeous i really can't wait to see it on the shelf once i put you know food in it so this is what it looks like again no threads um and here is another lid that I would place on top and crimp it. Now this is one liter and this is our um, 
quart. So I would say that a quart is about two thirds less, two thirds shy of a liter. Um, I measured it. So you would put two thirds more of water in here after a quart. So it's just two thirds shy. This is the jar lifter. It's the same concept of what we have here in America, except that it's like, has a full circle that touch each other. This is kind of an, um, I think this one was antique, I think, um, but it just allows you to grab the jars like that, like a regular one that we have here. Here's the thing, if you are going to order this system, you need to realize that these jars are not made for pressure canning. This is only a water bath system, which makes sense because um, there's not like, pressure canning is not done, you know, in other countries a whole lot, if, if any at all. Um, but yes, so if you're going to purchase this, absolutely no pressure canning. This glass is not made for that. It is made for water bath only. Now here's the thing. I have practiced a lot with after I crimp and then taking off the lids. Taking off the lids is, um, not as easy as you think when you're an American and you're first trying. I had to buy this tool here to take off the lids, which makes it way easier to do that because I was having quite a rough time trying to get them off. And then I finally asked my friend, how in the world do I get these lids off? <laughs> because they are crimped and um, this is how I got it off with that with that tool. The other thing is, is that we are so used to working with a rubber seal with our canning lids. Well, you don't get that with these types of lids. What you have in here is sort of, I don't know if you could see it up close, but there's like this, it, it almost, it, it, it's this right here. It feels like a dry rotted rubber band. It does have some very little elasticity. I hope I said that right. But if I go, it breaks immediately. So it's not like it's super rubbery. Very, very, very tiny. Um, yeah, that you could, yeah, see, so it's gonna, it breaks. So I wanted to show you that, you know, what is inside here so there is something cushioning the crimping in there but it's not like a rubber all right so we got through that let's get started i want to make what is called campo i hope i pronounced that correctly if i didn't then i apologize and it's basically making juice with fruit i'm super excited for this i hope that it turns out well and I'm going to show you the way that I learned um, from a friend firsthand, and let's get started. I have my apples here, because what I'm gonna do is put them in some water to make sure that they are nice and clean. You want to make sure that you, are, you scrub them really well, because we are going to be leaving the skins on. I've always liked to wash my apples and rinse them twice, but that's just me. Um, I have here a variety of different apples. When I spoke to my friend, um, she said that back in the day when she was in you know, her country, that they had um, an orchard and apples. Sometimes it would just be one variety. Um, and if they get an ap apples from um, a neighbor, then they may have more than one variety. So you certainly could do this method with just one type of apple. 
but I decided to go with a variety today. You also want to make sure that before you begin um, putting anything in your jars that you want to make sure that they are very clean. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And I'm just going to use super hot soapy water. So we have all of our apples washed and cleaned. We washed our jars and made sure that they were very clean and I put them aside to dry. The next step that I'm gonna do is take a stock pot and I'm gonna fill it up with water and put it on the stove to heat up. Transferring my pot to the heat. I'm gonna put it on a, like a, a six, I don't know, was that like a medium, a medium high. And I'll tell you what we're gonna be using the water for soon. I think this is a 12 quart pot. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'll make sure that I put it on the screen and I've filled it up to sort of like these knobs here where the handles hook onto, filled it up to there. And I'm just gonna let that sit and warm up. I'm not letting it come to like a vigorous rolling boil or anything like that. I'm just letting it warm up to it's just hot to touch. I'm cleaning the bowl that I'm going to be placing my sliced apples in. I just wanted to, again, um, remind you all that when we are doing methods like this or any method at all, it's so important to always have things nice and clean. So now I'm going to take my apples and I'm gonna make sure that I take off the stem. And I don't want any seeds in this, so I'm gonna make sure that I don't have the core in it either. Oopsies. And I'm just kind of making sure that I get a good combination of the different kinds of apples that I have here. I want it in both um, of the liter, three liter jars. So I'm kind of cutting the apple in half and separating them in between the both of them. I have any spots like this I'm gonna make sure that I take that out because I don't want that in my juice here we have our apples in our three liter jar I don't think I'll fill this up anymore I probably was probably I was going for half 
yeah, if we shake it a little bit, it gets about half. So that's, that's what I've learned to fill it up about half way. Um, if it's done differently with other people, I don't know, but this is just what I'm learning and sharing with you. So I'm gonna just shake this down again. Okay, we're a little bit over a half, but that's okay. Now we're gonna go get our water. Now our water is hot to the touch. It's not boiling, it didn't even simmer. It's just a nice, hot, heated water. I am going to cheat a little bit and use, you know, um, my American tool here um, and take the water and fill the jar. Uh, I just don't trust myself to be as accurate as many other women probably would be. So that's fine. I'm going to pour it in. And I'm just going to place a lid on top of it and just let it sit. All right, let's see if I can try it without my tool here. Let's see how accurate I can actually be. I think I can do it. All right. And again, I'm going to take a lid and these lids are beautiful. So I'm going to choose this one. Already it looks absolutely gorgeous and stunning. After we've poured the water in, I'm gonna allow these to sit for one hour and then we'll get to the next step. So my timer is almost up for uh, these jars sitting here. There it goes for one hour. I'm gonna pitch the rest of this water because we're not going to use the rest of it. The only remaining water we are going to be working with from here on out is going to be from these jars that have basically been marinating um, in the apples, with the apples. So I'm gonna take care of the rest of this water, dump it, and I'll meet you in the kitchen. We are back in the kitchen and I have my uh, two three liter jars here with the apples that have been soaking for one hour and I'm going to bring it up close to you. The jars are warm to touch, um, but they're not super hot that I can't handle, that, handle it with my hands. So this is what it looks like after one hour of soaking. I can imagine that after the next part, there is gonna be a lot more shrinkage with the apples but the water at the bottom is no longer completely clear as it was when we first started. Um, and I can imagine also that it's gonna get more and more concentrated. So what I'm going to do right now is take out all of the liquid and pour it back into my stock pot. And as I pour it into the stock pot, I want to leave the apples in the jar. I just want the liquid. So I, my hands are very clean. I spilled a little bit of it. And then I'm gonna put the lid right back on top. It's empty. And I'm putting the lid right back on top and then I'm going to do the same thing with the next one. And hopefully I won't spill it this time. Okay, and then again, I'm going to put the lid 
right back on top. Now I am going to turn the heat on this because now what we're gonna do with this water is make a syrup. Um, I did ask if I could use honey. Uh, the answer was like, it's not typical, you know, basically no, it's not something that they normally would do. They would use sugar. So the amount that I'm gonna use per three liter, per three liter um, is one and a half cups of sugar. So one and a half cups of sugar for this, one and a half cup of sugar for this three, for this three liter jar. And obviously we poured them all in here together. So I'm going to put about three cups of water, I mean of sugar in here. So let's do that now. And if you do know for a fact that you have a sweeter apple, you can cut down on the sugar. Also, this is the first time I'm making this, so I'm gonna know in a couple of months whether or not I feel like I can cut back or cut down on the sugar, um, but it's kind of trial and error. I don't know how my family's gonna like it yet as far as how sweet or not sweet, or if it's gonna come out more of a concentrate and I can add water. I don't know those things yet, but this is just what I'm going by from what I've learned so far. So we're gonna add three cups of sugar, and this is one, two, and three. And I'm going to mix this up until all the sugar, sugar is fully dissolved. Now, one of the things that my dearest friend said to me was that when she grew up in the fields doing the work, they had orchards that they, you know, pick their apples from, and this is how they made juice because apparently back in the day, it's not like you could go to the store and just go buy juice. If you wanted juice, well, then you had to make it yourself. So grapes, strawberries, apples. Um, but now you can buy juice there, um, but there are still many, many people who practice making their juice this way. And I mean, liters upon liters upon liters, like a whole entire room in the in an underground cellar were filled with this juice. Especially if you had a large family and if you were growing it and you already had an orchard, um, it would be more cost effective for you to do that for your family. The other thing is, is that I am not opposed or above learning from other people. I've learned so much from my audience. So if you are someone who has made campo before, campo, <laughs> then, and you wanna give me some tips, by all means, please do. Or if there's something that I may have missed, then let me know. Um, I know that everybody makes it different. So I am curious. Um, and the other thing is with the lids, some people will boil their lids and then some people don't. But either way, if this is something that you grew up with or you know more about than I would, definitely give me some tips and pointers. Okay, our syrup is ready. I have it over here. And our jars are still pretty warm to the touch. The apples have been keeping the jars warm. Now, I have the syrup here. It's not boiling and it wasn't even at a simmer, but it's pretty hot. You could see it's steaming. That's kind of where I, I want it to be as far as temperature, very hot to the touch. So I'm going to take a lid off 
and <laughs> I still haven't decided whether or not I'm going to ladle this in or try it the way they do it. Let's just give it a good old try. I just do not want to lose any liquid. So I'm going to go slowly and hope I do this correctly, please. Oh, I lost a little bit. Oh. Then I'm gonna put the lid right back on. I'm gonna go with the next one. I hope I do better this time around and I hope I didn't lo lose liquid too much where I can't fill this one up. much better much better and then I'm going to put the lid right back on top there was no headspace discussed um, I could put more in here and I think I'll do that I'll put a little bit more in there I still have this thing in me that I want to make sure that there's no food interfering with this seal I have not seen really anybody else do it in some of the videos also that I've tried to watch to learn from, but I'm gonna do it just because it's habit. Here is our crimper. Keep in mind that when you do this, you want to make sure that you have a towel underneath the jar because this is a crimper and you do not want the jar to move while you were trying to crimp it. You don't want it to turn with you. The other thing is that this is pretty hot. So um, you, you don't wanna handle the jar as much as you don't have to. So I'm going to put my crimper on. Actually, it's better if I start this way. And I'm gonna turn this. And I'm gonna hold it down until I start to feel resistance. And then I'm going to turn. Oh, I messed up. So there goes that one. I'm gonna do it again. It's been a, bit, a little bit, so, okay. Hope you can see this. Tighten it. More. And you have to be careful because, you know, as you're crimping, you don't want to um, crack the glass. I still don't even know if I did that one right. I know that when I see people do it, they don't go around as much as I do. I'm gonna see if I can just get a better crimp until I can't go around anymore. Ah, uh, much better, much better this time around. Okay. The jar is very hot. It's warm, it's not as hot as I thought, but I am going to turn it upside down and I'll tell you why in a minute.
now it's time to use the next, do the next one. It's very sticky because the syrup spilled over it as I was pouring it, so I'm gonna wipe that off. Again, very clean, very careful. You want to take care when you are doing any type of canning. So I'm gonna wipe around here because I over poured. All right, let's try this again and see if I do the next crimp a little bit better. The more practice you have, the better. And I am like standing on my tippy toes doing this. It's probably why you see people as they are doing this, a lot of the women will have it on a chair and do it on a chair because it's easier to do it on a chair than it is for me to be on my tippy toes and lean over and do it which I should do that. Actually, let's do that. Put it here. But I can handle this. Remember, it's not too hot where it's going to burn me. Much better. It's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> I think I need to crimp it more. And can you imagine, you know, being in another country and you have to do, oh, you guys aren't even being able to see me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there we go. And you have to do about 300 jars of this, of these. Can you imagine how hard people are working for their food to be preserved and how we as Americans just have to flip a lid on? With the ring. Okay. Again, still learning. I think that is crimped enough very very warm and I'm going to flip this one over along with the other one Now the reason why I flip these over is because the system is again different than the American system where we have, you know, the push button to tell whether or not it has sealed. It pings back, it pushes back. Um, we don't have that with this system. So when I turn everything upside down, I'm gonna know whether or not this is a good seal by seeing if the liquid seeps out. If it seeps out, then I know that I did something wrong. I did not crimp it well enough. And I know it's not a good seal. And I'm gonna let that um, sit like this. Now, another thing is that I am going to cover this to keep the heat in to also help reserve the heat all together. And to keep it as hot as long as I can. This is a very thick towel. Okay. And I'm going to leave it like that till the morning. And by the morning, I should be able to tell if not here soon, if I have a good seal or, or not based on the amount of leakage that I get or don't get. So I will see you tomorrow morning. It's the next morning and I have not looked at this at all. I did feel it a couple times and this stayed warm for a very long time. 
Um, but let's just get right to it and see what we have. I'm gonna check the seal and I'm gonna see if, you know, for any stickiness because I wanna make sure that nothing dripped out. And right now I feel things are nice and dry. I don't see anything. I don't feel anything sticky. So I have the first one here. And then the second one. And they still are the slightest bit warm. So, I mean, it absolutely looks gorgeous in a jar. And I just have to wait. I'm just gonna have to keep, you know, waiting until I can taste it. So, um, I probably won't taste it for about two to four months. So I'll make sure I do um, an updated video on that to let you know how I did. I'm so hoping, I mean, I have high, ho I have high hopes for sure. I will say I did think it would be a little bit darker. It is, you know, so I don't know like if over the next couple of months, if it's going to get darker, I don't know that. But here's the other one as well. I really hope this turned out, but I have to be patient and wait. Now I know a lot of people have been asking me, where in the world do I get these, jar these jars? Again, I'm gonna make sure that everything is in the description. I don't know if this shop can handle like the capacity of orders. I have no idea, but I do know that if you go on Etsy and you start to look for similar items, it will recommend other things as well. Basically what we've done here is essentially the open kettle method. That's what we would call it here. There was no processing that we did. I do have upcoming videos to show you how to process with this system and there's a lot more to learn with that too. So we have um, more to learn and um, do together. But in the meantime, I think we have a fabulous product from the looks of it. We're gonna taste it and we'll find out then. <laughs> So anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this video and um, enjoy the learning process as well. I'll try my best to explain as much as I know each and every time I do a video. So anyway, guys, take care and as always, God bless.